Hi, this is Kamal. I am co-founder at Accelerate AI. I have little more than two decades of experience in the industry specializing in the area of data science and artificial intelligence. I welcome you all to this short video series. Our focus on this series is automated exploratory data analysis, or in short, you can call it automated EDA. If you are having some experience in data science and would like to accelerate your journey to the next step, next phase in data and AI space, then we can help you accomplish that with our guidance. Please do reach out to us and we'll be able to help you with that. Our focus is industry-driven problem-solving methods that help data science practitioners like you accelerate their careers towards success. And that's what we feel is our strength. So let me take this opportunity to walk you through on the automated EDA. When we look at the problems and then how do we solve from problems to data sets to outcomes, the journey is like this, right? Initially, you would have a problem statement that you are trying to solve. And then of course, you would get some data sets. It could be from different sources, different formats. And then we apply something called as CRISP DM process, cross industry standard process for data mining. And this is extremely important in any data science project or program from that perspective. And then of course, we get onto the outcomes. Now in this entire journey, if you look at the crucial part of the data science process, is data understanding, data preparation, which is approximately close to 80% of the entire work that we do. So that becomes extremely important to focus on exploratory data analysis, how we prepare data, data analysis skills, data munging, data wrangling skills around this. If you look at John Tukey, who's a Princeton University professor, he was also the author of Exploratory Data Analysis. And he has mentioned very aptly that exploratory data analysis is an attitude. It's a state of flexibility. And more importantly, how you look at it for those things that you believe are existing or are not existing, right? That's, that's the way we have to derive. That's what the mindset that we have in, time, in terms of exploring that as part of this ETA process. Now, the first problem in exploring the data and then coming up with, with the value is we try to answer a few questions when there is a business problem, right? So some of the things that come up to my mind is what question does this visualization answer? How can I solve it? What type of chart should I use? Should I go for bar chart, line chart, heat map? There is relevancy of these charts for our analysis, what we try to accomplish. And are there relationships that exist which are statistically significant? Right, all of these questions we need answer. And in order to look into from that perspective, you'd see exploring all of these is trial and error and it's time consuming and these are overwhelming. So that's, that's the first problem that we have. Then if you look at today's landscape, you know, programming language first, there are open source like Python and R. They have a lot of open source libraries. You have Pandas, you have Seaborn, you have Matplotlib, you have Plotly in, in the Python ecosystem. If you look at R, you have ggplot2, Lattice, and so on. Now, all of these are open source, free, but require some coding knowledge for you to quickly adapt and come up to the analysis and the visualization, right? At the same time, if you look at some of the business intelligence tools or predominantly menu-driven UI or user interfaces, if we may say, right? There you have Excel, Power BI, Tableau, ClickView, Spotfire, and so on, right? It is just a small representative list. There could be many more. Now here, when you look at it, there's no coding as such, but these are licensed and these are expensive. So what are we trying to look at this? Another Second point that we see as, as an issue or a problem that we need to solve is 
how do I process my data to generate some pointed visualization that answer my business questions? Because at the end of the day, you are solving your business problems and you have to have some visualizations, some analysis, which can answer your questions. Then what type of package, what type of charts that are possible? How do I use it? How many packages do I need to learn? So there is a, it requires a lot of code and decision making around that when we look at these type of questions that are doing as part of the process, right? So that's number two. Then number three is some of these business intelligence tools or some of these license tools which are expensive and they also need some manual work. So if we look at in the process, if I recall, first exploring the trial and error is time consuming and overwhelming when we try to perform data exploration. And that's the problem one. Second, you have seen it requires a lot of code and decisions because we are looking for some open source uh, code libraries and so on. Third, we are looking at something which can quickly give us charts, but then it is licensed, costly, expensive, a lot of manual work also needed there, right? Now, answer to that is auto EDA, right? When you look at this, uh, you know, these are there, are, there are three key points is in our opinion. One, it's faster and quicker. Second, it saves time and effort. Third, it provides you analysis of some quick statistical insights, whether you're looking for missing value treatment, duplicates, whether you're looking for correlation between variables, whether you're looking for variable interactions, all of these are quickly captured and given to you in a very seamless manner using some of these. Now, there are some examples that we have captured here, like SweetVees, data prep, Pandas profiling, AutoVees, Detail, and Lux. These are, of course, tools representation is a non-exhaustive list. There could be many more. We're just giving a representation which you can use and leverage to shorten some of your analysis. And then we'll, we'll look at one by one. In this video series, let me take a demo to show you about how Pandas profiling works to, to give you a real reflection and then get a feel of it. Okay, so if you look at this notebook, we have taken um, our data set reference of loan prediction data set, uh, the, the typical one, which is available in Kegel. And here our objective is to perform exploratory data analysis in a quick manner. Of course, this is a smaller data set, but uh, we wanted to show you how the entire features and functionalities as part of Pandas profiling works, right? If you look at some of the features, it gives a general overview of all the variables that are existing in the data set, and we'll see that. Now, it also provides you the details about each variables, each features in this, the interactions, the correlations, um, what are the missing value, missing value percentage, uh, and so on, right? And, and what we would like to highlight is when do you use this pandas profiling, uh, when the data set size is relatively smaller, it's not that large, uh, second, you would need some quick insights about some unknown data set, because when we get some analysis, you know, we need some quick information about how it is, what is the pattern, you know, how can we derive some quick relationship between the variables and so on, right? So use this as a basis for your EDA analysis on top of it. That's what we would recommend. Obviously, this is not a, a complete entire EDA solution for you, but you use that for shortening some initial preliminary analysis and then leverage this on top of your next steps of the EDA that you do. So if you look at it, we have uh, uh, used, uh, imported uh, the, the pandas uh, library. Then there is something called as pandas underscore profiling that you have to import into your session. Then, you know, in, in the sample data set that we have taken for our loan eligible data set or the loan prediction data set, there's a trend data set and you would see some of the values of this, of the data set and the test data set. And of course, these are all 614 rows and 13 columns, 367 rows and 12 columns for the test data set. If you look at the data set, it covers something very specific to these parameters or values, right? And then when we perform this one single line of code, the profile report of the data set, and we are trying to look into the trained data set. 
Now, PP is something that we have already imported, pandas profiling as PP, and that's the normal notion, which we are using it to call the profile report and generate it. When we generate this, you know, you would see initially, first of all, the overview of all the data elements. Number of variables, number of observations, what are the variable types, whether it is categorical, Boolean, or numeric, all those things are highlighted here. The missing sales, the missing sales percentage, duplicate rows, whether it exists or not, a lot of these things are there. Warnings also will give you whether any particular variable has high cardinality, high correlation between some of those. What are the missings? It's a combination of all of these information that it will provide. And of course, you know, this is the reproduction of this particular HTML file that it generated. Then when you go to variables, you would see for each and every variable, how is the representation of some of these parameters and some of the data reflections, whether when there is a categorical one, for example, gender, you know, how many records in male, how many records in female and so on. So you'd see a lot of these information in the variables. Then you go to interactions, it gives you interaction between, and you can play around with different features. So for example, I would like to know applicant income versus loan amount, applicant income versus loan amount, that's the scatter plot that it draws and provides a quick reflection of this particular chart for me. And then I can, I can go and then do that for all other numerical variables that exist in this data set that we have been analyzing. And then we go to correlation. By default, it shows you Pearson's correlations, Pearman's, Kendall's, Fike, and Kramer's fee. And then you can always toggle correlation description to see what is Pearson's R coefficient and how is the significance of it. And you can toggle back to see the data out here, right? There is also a missing values, missing value representation by count, by metrics, representation by heat map, and also dendrogram. And then there is a sample which talks to you about first 10 rows and last 10 rows in this. So essentially, when we look at it, you know, you have seen just about one simple line of code. It gives you an immediate analysis of this. So what we are seeing this, obviously, this is not the solution. You know, it gives you an initial step so that you can save a lot of your time while performing the initial analysis. So it gives a quick insight. It saves a lot of time for you. That's, that's number one. Second, it gives a quick detail about each and every variables and features so that you can understand what is happening around it, right? And then third, if you look at some of the details, you know, the, the interactions, the correlations, the missing values, all of these are there so that when you actionize as part of your next step of EDA analysis, you can, you can take action on how do you handle missing values? How do you handle the correlations that are happening? Is there any outliers? How do you handle that? You know, it gives you a very basic analysis of this, but this is really quick and, and saves a lot of time is what we have seen. That's all we have you to show you on this video, short video. Thank you so much. And let us know if you have any specific feedback. Thank you.